Hey team, thanks for joining. In this tutorial, let's see how we can compare huge amount of volume using an open source library called DataComp. Generally, if you're working for a different organization, there is always a need when you copy from one database to a different database that you want to compare. Right? You can obviously use a brute force approach where you can compare one row with a different uh, different row and column and things of that nature. It gets messy too fast, right? And we can also take a look at that maybe in a different tutorial. Um, so Right now, what you'll do is, you know, um, there are two ways you can use DataCompy. Uh, DataCompy is an open source library, I think, originally created by uh, Capital One, right? It's been open source since then. You can do a couple of GitHub pages as well, where you can go and look at the directly the source code of that. Pretty neat. Please do take a look at that um, as well. So for now, as I mentioned, there are two ways you can uh, do use DataCompy. One, using a pandas, uh, which we'll be using in this tutorial. There's also a version where you can use the PySpark version, which is for obviously more efficient. If you're looking for a huge volume, if you, you know, probably millions of rows. Pandas, I think it caps off in two to three million, five million, I think you're, you're, you're touching the boundaries there. So if you use, if you have a file which is like 50 million, 100 million, or even um, 200 million, you can use a, you can spin up a, a instance, you know, uh, use a PySpark version and you can do that. Maybe you can do that in, 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 from AWS standpoint, but for now, let's just um, get this ball rolling. I do have the um, script ready. So the script is as um, as on the screen. We will be going ahead and importing data compy, import, import pandas as PD. Um, I have two data sets, which I will take a tour very shortly. Then the syntax is as on the screen. I normally want to use the most simplest version. I have not really gone too, too much depth into it. There are, there are a lot, lot of uh, options that data compy gives, gives you. Right. Um, all you're trying to do is you know, comparing your source with the destination, the F1 with the DF2, and we will be using uh, the primary key that that you that you have. Right. I have a primary call low number which I'll be using. Um, then two pretty neat uh, options where you can go ahead and print this and print report information also uh, other other mismatches. So let's get started. Um, let me also go ahead and quickly showcase the data that you're working with. All right. The data that I'm working is this. It's called loan k loan underscore 100k v1. That's how I've named it. All that translates to it's just a file. Oops. It's a mortgage for file. Basically, um, it has volume of uh, 100 hundred thousand. Um, and it's taking a bit to load. All right. Uh, it has a volume of basically hundred hundred thousand um, rows. And it has information about principal balance, credit score, mortgage uh, credit score information. Uh, oh, let me look at this. It's uh, it's mortgage insurance. Okay, mortgage insurance. There also has information about mortgage product, bankruptcy. Uh, we have been late in the last six months, late in the last twelve months, due date, and loan closing date as well. So the, you can use this information um, to maybe sometimes. Let's say you want to use, write some rules to say whether this customer. We can um, approve them for a refinance. Or there are so many use cases that you can play, play, work with. We can, we can, we can talk through that in maybe a different tutorial. But for now, this is a data set that I'll be working with to compare. And I've also created a one more data set, right? A hundred uh, loan underscore hundred k underscore v two. I made a couple of changes just to showcase how we can uh, get those nuances. Uh, I made very really small changes, maybe three to four, just to showcase that how the data can be can compare these two uh, files and spits out results. All right, let's quickly get started here. All right, I'm just gonna get this to a different screen. All right. Just hands. Okay, just trying to get this uh, situated. And we should be ready. All right, so first things first, please make sure you install DataCompy. All right. I've already installed it, so I'm um, just, just, it just tells me that you know, I'm good to go. But in your case, depending if you're running from your local, if you're running in an organization, hopefully, you know, your infrastructure team has kind of 
package this tool and have placed this into your respective artifacts, repositories? If yes, that's great. If not, then you probably will run into some issues and you have to work with your infrastructure team whether they can download it for you. Right, that's that's one thing. And um, in my case, I've already installed it, so let's go ahead and invoke a Python. Go ahead and import pandas as pd. Then I will go ahead and import data copy. That's good. I will go ahead and copy the two data sets uh, by reading the CSV. That's my df1. Alright, that was smooth. df2. And as I mentioned, there are two ways to do this comparison. I'm going to use the most simplest one. All right, compare equals data comp p dot compare. I'm comparing my df1 and df2, and my primary key is going to be a low number. Okay, with that being said, let's go ahead and print the results. Right, this is, some, this is an exciting piece. Again, there, um, for us to even come here, there's a lot of code that goes in the background, and this is where I really encourage to go and check, check that GitHub for uh, data compy. Really nice uh, code. Okay, I did that and I code goes and spits out some, some records. Let's just go and look at it in a very high level. All right, I just went to print compare.report. It tells me data frame summary. It has two data frames, df1, df2. The number of columns in each is 16 and 16. The rows is 100,000, expected. Right, and this one tells you the column summary, number of columns in common, 16, and then obviously it looks at both of them and tells that you no, know, uh, is there if if there's an extra column, it basically spits out. That's what that translates to. And then it goes and shows cases and you know, how many how many records are um, there. There is an issue with how many records there's not an issue with. In this case, 99,910. There is no issue. Uh, it did go ahead and find some issues. 90. Remember in um, start the tutorial, start of the tutorial, I just mentioned that they, you should only find a couple of them. But it's interesting. This actually picked up quite a lot. Let's look at them right now. All right. Um, first, I think in, let's go ahead and say it tells that simple rows with unequal values. Uh, low number 19, um, just one of the low numbers. It tells me there's a difference. If you look at them. Um, it's not a whole lot of difference. So what might be happening in the background, maybe is going into the 6th or 7th or 8th uh, decimal and then splitting that. So you will see this happening sometimes. If you see that, then it's up to you, um, the business requirement, whether the, you really want to have the precision or not. If yes, this you can sign off this on this unit case. If not, then you have to go back and check as to why there is a, there's a difference, right? Let me look, for example, now let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. It, Again, the same thing. The, uh, the difference was on a column called Y in the previously. Now there's a principal balance. It's again, again, it's same precision. There's not a lot of change, but changes here, except for this one. Interestingly, in, um, number nine with the principal balance um, after the decimal the last is 325. The here is 330. So it does pick up that minute uh, detail as well. Okay, so let's move on. Again, there is a difference here with respect to the product. One of them it tells that in the source file, it's that your fix in in the destination file or the file that you can get to migrate to the 301 year fixed. Right, 15 year fix, 16 year fix. Right? I actually made these changes just to showcase, but it's clear that it's actually catching that. That's good to go. Um, again, if you come here, we obviously see the difference that one of them it tells that the month um is 09 but he just it's, here it's nine so it is also picking that differences as well so that is good again the same same difference can be seen here as well again on high level it kind of picks up all the information there's a difference so it spits that out again just look at the beauty of this right you can extrapolate this and you can go to millions of rows i don't have to uh, do the whole manual comparison, right? Where you have to brute force compare one column with the column. Yes, you can do it in Python. Um, some of the data structure folks will not be happy if you do a comparison of, you know, uh, millions of rows of uh, data again using brute force. 
All right, so let's look at the one more option that we have here. We're just going to go ahead and print all the mismatches. Again, um, it, it goes and spits it out it's differences between uh, two columns up to next to each other. Some of them obviously we don't see, maybe because it's a precision, which is looking at sixth or seventh decimal place. You have to go back and check the data. Here you can see there's a difference here for principal balance in with respect to um, the decimal point 698.221. Here it says 698.220. Right, small differences is picking up, so that's great news. Uh, or here is 0919-2023, 919-2023. Again, this is all something which we already discussed. All right, this is working as expected. Now let's go ahead and make a change on the fly. I'm not rehearsed this, so hopefully uh, I don't, you know, come up with, I don't come up short rather. Okay. Let me just open this file up and um, let's go ahead and make a change, right? Just to showcase, obviously, I don't really have two databases sitting here. So this is just to showcase that I have two files, 100,000. I will go ahead and make a random change. Right, I'm going to stop somewhere here. Um, let's make this, I'm just going to call it product, just for the fun of it. All right, so that is the one change that I will make on the already made, made changes that we have. It is for line number 55166. Or maybe you can we can't see it, but yeah, it is uh, it is five five one one six. Oops. Hopefully, I've not lost it here. There you go. 551166 rather. Ah, there you go. I made this change. Very nice. Well, there was a product before. I made this as a, there was a different product and I actually typed in as product. Okay, it's good to go. All right, I'm going to save it. Now let's go ahead and run the compassion again. Hopefully, we pick this up, pick this one up. For this, we need to go ahead and reinitialize our. Uh, CSV, which which is for DFTU. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Reinitialize my DFTU. That's good. And let me do ahead and do a compare again. That's good. And now for the results. all the screen goes we should be able to capture the product which it is doing really nicely right so that is what we had we had a 30 year fix in, uh, previously now we made the change as product it shows up uh, as expected so this is great again amazing utility please go ahead and use it now it'll save you a ton of time I'm sure your stakeholders will be, will be very pleased with you guys all right if there are any questions thoughts Please feel free to comment that. I really love to read them. Again, if you like what I'm doing, give a thumbs up. You know, subscribe as well. It helps the YouTube algorithm. Thank you and have a good one.